Come and see what everyone's talking about. La ilaha illallah. Allah. There's only one God and Jesus was his messenger. Allah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, which means peace be unto you. Welcome to another episode of The Dean Show. We'd like to thank everybody who's been viewing us every week. We're excited to get a lot of your emails. We try to encourage people to send us your comments and suggestions. Some of the um, questions that are more scholarly questions, the fit questions we ask, that uh, you don't send us those because I'm not a scholar. And some of the questions that we encourage are from non-Muslims, people wanting to know about Islam. What does Islam mean? Who are the Muslims? What is this Quran? Who is this messenger, Muhammad? So to be open-minded, humble-hearted, and send your questions. And that's what we're going to be discussing on this episode of The Dean Show, a question that someone wrote in, and then we're going to discuss this question, turn it into a topic, and from there let you be the judge. See if you can benefit from this. Now, I'm going to go ahead and bring out my next guest, and we'll hit the question, and then let you benefit when we come back on The Dean Show. Allah, there's only one God, and Muhammad is his messenger, Allah. La ilaha illallah Allah There's only one God and Jesus was his messenger Allah La ilaha illallah I don't know why I did that. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Very good. Alhamdulillah. All right. So uh, for those of you that have never seen the Dean show, somebody kind of twisted your arm, you're sitting next to a, a Muslim, he said, come watch this show, I just wish peace upon him, he wished it back upon me, and now we're just here uh, talking about good stuff, peace. <laughs> Things that can bring you peace is Islam. So we're going to be talking about uh, this question that we got in from a non-Muslim, and this is something that I'm sure a lot of people are out there probably possibly thinking the same thing. Now remember, we want you to be sincere with yourself as you're listening to this and the advice that we'll give uh, towards the end. The, the uh, uh, person says, I don't like to be religious because it makes me depressed. I would not be able to live your life. It's boring, saying that, you know, uh, living Islam is boring. What do you do for fun? Everything is forbidden in Islam. Can't date. Oh, uh, you can't meet your soulmate. You see, there's a lot of for a Muslim watching. Said, man, this person's already. They're probably the Muslims probably laughing. This is you know, but it's a big uh, misconception that people have, and, and we're seeing that right here. Come on, you can't go clubbing. I'll, God forbid if you miss that Friday Saturday night at the club. You know, you got to get that VIP card. God forbid if I can't do that. Okay, you can't have an occasional drink. Uh oh, uh, you know. Uh, Kool-Aid and, 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 and orange juice and all the other hundreds of drinks that are out there. That's not enough, but we got to have that uh, uh, jack on the rocks, huh? Okay, uh, you can't have sex if you feel like it. I just want to get down. So the person saying, I want to get down when I want to do it. Uh, that's a boring life, Eddie. Uh, women in your religion cover from head to toe. There's no freedom at all. Uh, I add my own words into this a little bit. It's probably the sisters who are Muslim, which we know that many more uh, women are coming to Islam. Probably laughing at this, but the person has, you know, given this question. I'm just adding a little uh, uh, humor to this, but because it's funny to us. But we hope you're still listening. Look, but men can have more wives as long as I know. This is ridiculous, man. It's the best not to follow any religion. I feel sorry for the Muslim females and etc etc uh, they can have more wives and they put the uh, uh, the woman down and the other final thing is uh, the media and look at you know the terrorism with media and associating Islam with all these things blowing up like I said I really love my life and the things I'm enjoying in it right now after we all die we go to heaven anyway thank you very much by the way for sending this forgive me if I was a little sarcastic because it's funny because we're going to explain and hopefully clear 
your mind from all the junk that it's not your fault. If you go on, if you're sincere and you want to know the truth, after you get the truth delivered to you, now you're going to be responsible in front of, the, in front of your creator. So we're going to talk about this. I, I hope I uh, 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 translated this or read it right. You can understand what she's yep, talking sure, about. Sure. Let's go ahead and talk about this. There's a lot of points here, a lot of misconceptions, uh, mm -hmm. but it's something that the average person uh, is uh, thinking. I think the first comment we have to talk about is that our, the life of a Muslim, a submissive Muslim, is boring. Boring, they say. The fundamental problem in this email isn't one of not being convinced of Islam. Yeah. The fundamental problem is that this person is looking at Islam from the point of view of how is it going to serve me. Mm. The very fundamental question in Islam is how do I serve God? Yes. And once you come into that submission, you are showered with all sorts of benefits and favors that you couldn't have even imagined. The ultimate one of which is peace with yourself. Peace. Now, but still, one of the great scholars of Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah rahmahullah, he talked about the two fundamental obstacles that come in the way of people that want to reach the truth. And he said in Arabic, the, the words are uh, uh, shubuhat and shahawat. Doubts yeah. and desires. Desires. Doubts and desires. Some people, they're not sure if this is the truth. If they became sure, they would follow it. Yeah. Other people, even if they were made sure it's true, that still wouldn't be enough for them to follow it because they are too addicted to their own desires. The nightclubs, drinking, all these other... This laundry list of items, yeah. these desires. The thing of it is, in order to truly have, to be committed to the truth, it's not enough that we share the ideas of what is true and what isn't. Even though at the end of your email you talked about you know uh, women having to cover and men getting to have four you know uh, four wives and things like that, which is actually a minor issue. Your major issue, even in your mind, the way you organize your thoughts in your email, your major problem is having to give up what you love. Mm -hmm. That's your major problem. Then this other stuff really it's secondary. We could talk about it too, but really we have to try and deal with the major issue. And the major issue is one's own desires, one's own inclinations. Now the thing of it is, religion in our times has almost looked like a casual lifestyle, kind of fashionable kind of thing. Yeah, I'm into this right now and I'll try that out too and I'll try that out too. It's kind of like, you know, changing fashion uh, statements. Yeah, exactly, you know? yeah. Or different music genres. I was into country, now I'm into hip hop or something. You know, it's like a fashionable thing. Something convenient that you just... You exactly, know. it's very casual. Yeah. It's very casual. And the idea behind it is, I'm going to do it basically to find some entertainment for myself. Right? It's going to be something curious for me. That's so why you might see a lot of these different places, they got the rock bands, and you know, just trying right. to you know, draw the people in any which way. Exactly. So a lot of religions, because they're losing their followers, what they're adding is an element of entertainment into the religion, so that people will stick around. <laughs> right? Yeah. So now, the first fundamental question we have, or, or, or uh, concern we have for such a person is, you haven't sorted out why you were put on this earth. So is the reality of the human being that he was here to, he or she was here to just eat, drink, sleep, have sex, have fun, and die? Was that the, is that the purpose of their life? And if it is the purpose of your, if that is the purpose of your life, and there is nothing coming, I mean you're saying there's a heaven afterwards. So everybody goes to heaven no matter what they do, no matter how many people they murdered, no matter how many kinds of crimes they did, what kind of God would it be that would let just any, any of these people get away with their crimes? with all of this injustice that has happened on the earth. And if you're saying, if you would think a little deeply about this and say, no, people that do great horrible crimes, injustices, have to be punished. Even your own limited intellect tells you this much. Then understand, if you say, well, the stuff that I'm doing is not so bad. is not so bad. When the guy kills somebody, you know what he says to himself? It's not so bad. There's much worse that can be done. Yeah. Right? We were talking about relativity of, of, of ethics. So the person who's messed up says, there's people far worse than I am. Uh -huh. So I shouldn't be worried. Because there's people, you know, if a guy kills one, he says, at least I didn't kill a hundred. Yeah. Right? So this mentality of saying, well, what, what I'm doing is just enjoying myself. I'm not, you know, there's no consequences of this. Is because you've decided to, you've become the judge of what is right and what's wrong. What Muslims are arguing with all sincerity and humility 
is that you and I are not in a position in the absolute sense to decide even what is good or harmful for our own selves. Even what's good and harmful for our own selves. We, we're not in a position to know what is coming ahead of us. Nobody left this earth, went into the ground, got buried and came back and told us there's a light at the end of the tunnel and there's a heaven and there's a hell. Nobody came back and told us. So you can't say that you know this on your own from human experience. Mm-hmm. This is knowledge beyond yourself. So when you say with full confidence, after this half the email about turning this life into heaven for yourself, doing whatever you want, that's heaven, isn't it? Yeah. So turning this life into a, a, a life of pleasure for yourself. And then you argue, well, I'm going to party here, and then when I die, there's more coming. There's more coming. Then you've decided to make a past judgment on something you have no knowledge of. You have no knowledge of this. You know, uh, Allah Azza wa speaks, He says, Are you saying on behalf of God what you have no knowledge of? Are you saying on behalf of Allah what you have no idea about? So the idea that you're okay in the hereafter is almost like a delusion. And actually, in fact, it is a delusion. That I'm doing alright, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with my life. And especially, you know, if you're a, a young person and you think your whole life is ahead of you, how many young people that thought their whole life was ahead of them, that were going to party away their life, died in a car accident? <laughs> that died on their way to the club. That never got a chance to live out their entire life the way they had planned. And so their false hopes, your false aspirations, you think these things are going to bring you happiness? You know why you keep going back to the club and you keep going back to these desires? Because you never find satisfaction. You're never satisfied. You're never going to be fulfilled. You're never going to be content. What we are offering in Islam, what we have found in Islam for ourselves, is a means by which our hearts are at peace. They're at rest. They're not discontent. We are pleased with what we have. And I promise you, you know, in one of the most beautiful things in Islam is finding your soulmate. That's one of the most beautiful gifts in Islam. You, yeah, you argue, that's one of the things here. You right, can't, that's you can't why meet I'm, your soulmate. You can't meet your soulmate. You see, what is a soulmate? It's not just about physical desires, physical pleasures. I'm sure you and other people you know have had the experience of thinking they found their soulmate, getting used, getting abused, getting manipulated like a, you know, like, like a toy, and then being thrown off being you know, uh, disregarded. And people like that, you know when, when somebody uses you like that, and somebody takes advantage of you like that, you lose respect for yourself, and you lose respect for others. So the next time around, you're going to do it to someone else, and you're not going to feel so bad about it either. Because you've lost a little bit of your humanity every single time. What Islam is saying is so powerful. We treat our, our women with the utmost respect. Our Messenger told us وسلم, the best of you are the ones who are best to their spouses, and I'm the best to mine. You know, so he teaches us to be the most merciful, kind, and lenient towards our spouses. And really, I don't want to talk about the reality of spousal abuse in the world, which happens in the Muslim world and happens in the non-Muslim world. I'm not saying Muslims are not guilty of spousal abuse. That, they are. That's the defect in that individual. Yes, this is not to speak anything of Islam. And actually they violated some very basic principles of Islam if they're engaged in abusing their spouse. This is one, one of the most uh, uh, prized you know, responsibilities. One of the highest responsibilities a man has in this life as a Muslim is taking care of his wife. This is one of the things he's going to be interrogated about in front of Allah. How did you deal with her? Were you kind to her? Did you take care of her? Did you protect her? Did you honor her? Did you teach her? Etc, etc. These are the things that you know, Muslim men are supposed to take very, very seriously. But the bottom line isn't even this issue. The bottom line is, forget men. This religion is not about men versus women. That's not the issue. The issue is, you and your Lord. You and your provider. He gave you all of these things to enjoy, and He's asking you. You can be deluded by these things, you could be you know, dissuaded by these things, or you can have eternal pleasure, eternal life. Something, a pleasure far beyond what, what these few things that you're obsessed with can ever help you with. You know, you're going to get drunk, and you're going to throw up, and you're going to have a hangover. You're going to go to the club, you're going to wake up somewhere, you don't even know what happened to you the night before. You're going to do these things thinking it's going to bring you pleasure, and it's going to end up causing you, if it hasn't already, a lot of pain. You think you're happy, you're kidding yourself. You really are. So that uh, those two next, we covered the soulmate and many things before that, and the clubbing. You know, come on, club. You know, the clubbing and the occasional drink. 
So is is this really where the happiness is? You know, going from club to club, Friday to Friday. So I live and work, you know, throughout the week to make enough money to enjoy my Friday yeah. or my Saturday. Sure. And then I get to talk about it Monday with all the friends, and then we look forward to doing it again next Friday. So it goes from fr Friday to Friday. Your whole life is just a week. Your whole life is just a repeat cycle of that entire week. That's all it is. That's all your purpose amounts to. And really, I say, why do people love alcohol so much? You know, this is my personal take on it. This may or may not be true. Yeah. It's an escape from reality. Yeah. Why do people get into drugs? Yeah. It's an escape from reality. Your life is so bad. You got so many problems. You got nothing to look forward to in your life. Uh, the only thing you have to look forward to is that time where you will jump around like a, a wild animal, drink something to lose touch with your problems, your reality, your own purpose. Right? So from weekend to weekend, you're just looking to get high or you know, get away from this world, this, the, the reality around you. You don't want to take responsibility for why you were put on this earth. That's what it is. You're trying to run away from it. You're trying to escape it. You know, you know, even if you're trying to find pleasure, if you're trying to find you know, physical pleasure, if you're trying to find monetary benefit. You know people who run after money their entire life, they're still not happy. They still don't find happiness. They'll buy this big old mansion that they thought they would love, and after a couple of months of living in that mansion, they'll find somebody else's mansion that's nicer. And say, man, I don't have that, and there's a void in their heart. Mm -hmm. It's never going to be fulfilled. Your greed, your lust, it's never going to be fulfilled. Faith, real faith, true faith, offers something that nothing else can offer. It can fill your heart with contentment. That's what we're offering. So you have to fight your desires. You have to, for a moment, maybe for a day, for a week, we ask you just to put your desires aside, just put them aside for a little while and just deeply reflect on the truth. Reflect on your real purpose in life and see if that can push you in a different direction. There were people like, much like you that were in a life of, of really entertaining themselves, drowning themselves in, in, in all of their seductions and Allah gifted them with just a, a possibility, of just a few moments of taking a seat back, pulling themselves out of that cycle and thinking about it for a moment. And they found the truth. And they are now, they are at more peace now than they were ever before. Why is it do you think that a young man, a young Muslim man, a young Muslim woman, you know, good looking, healthy, smart, you know, making good money, etc., etc., is not going to go to the club? He has all the power to. Uh -huh. What's stopping him? What is so powerful that it's, it's not tempting him like it tempts you? Why is it that he's able to fight that? He's got something so powerful that nobody else can see. And we want to share that treasure with you. We want to share that, That's, yeah. that's what we want you to experience. Uh, you know, a lot of us, we, uh, some of us are just coming over from what we call jahaliya, coming over from the days of ignorance. Some people, you know, they can relate to this and they're laughing at it now because they have that true peace and that contentment. They don't have to go to the club. They don't have to go chasing the material world. But why do you think it is that someone... You know, we've seen this, you know, the woman, she, because the next point she mentions is, you know, women in your religion, uh, they got to cover from head to toe. But you'll see women just fighting so hard. It's like freezing outside and she's got, you know, the, the skirt coming up and you're like, man, ain't you cold? She's just fighting, but now the cold weather will still have to have her put on some kind of, some clothes. Yeah. Or she'll have to give out... You know, the number, the guys are out there, you know what their agenda is. They, yeah. they want to satisfy their desires. The woman, she feels insecure if she's not giving, at least if her phone's not blowing up and 20 guys are calling her a date. She's got to have this, this uh, feeding to her ego and it becomes like a game. It yeah. becomes like, you know, this life we're just playing with each other. And it's really uh, what a lot of times uh, our sisters don't realize in humanity is that they're actually being used. They think they're dressing how they want. You don't want that. You just want, you're just uh, appealing to the desires of men. That's what they want. It's not what you want. They want it more than you do. They want you to dress half naked. You know, and so the, the, the thing about hijab and covering and modesty and things like that, first and foremost, it's a commandment in Islam. Well, uh, the Muslim woman covers, she, she covers herself in a certain way. Why? Because she is convinced this is a commandment, a prescription from her Lord, and what her Lord says is better for her in her fulfilling her purpose. Uh -huh. that's, the, that's the essential point of this issue. But just to speak about clothing a little bit, you know there are, uh, in Islam we say that there are three purposes of uh, clothing. There are three purposes of clothing. Uh, one purpose of clothing is protecting yourself from the elements of the weather, uh -huh. like you just mentioned. Another purpose of clothing is beautification. Another purpose of clothing is modesty. There are three purposes. Protection, Beautification and modesty. 
But the priority is different. In Islam, the priority first is what? Modesty. That's the first priority. You have to have decency. You have to have, you know, uh, you shouldn't be uh, uh, objectified, you know. So that's the first purpose. The second purpose in, uh, of clothing in Islam, of course, is protection from the weather and, and together with beautification. There's nothing wrong with wearing nice, clo nice clothes, so long as you are guarding your modesty, right? What happens in a lot of non-Muslim culture is that a lot of times people don't care about modesty at all. They don't even care sometimes about protecting themselves from the weather, like you said. Yeah. What are they concerned about? What they think is beautification. Yeah. That's what they're concerned. She's got. About. She don't want the whistle, but she's got to have it. Yeah. So, so this is the, uh, you know, it's a it's a change of shift because you know, and we say modesty, which is a kind, it's a, it's an aspect of humility. And why does a Muslim have to have humility? Because they've acknowledged that they're not in charge of their life. There's a higher power. Yeah. So even in their their speech, even in their daily life, in how they spend their time. And their clothing, clothing is just one, one manifestation of humility, but we argue that humility has to be something that's a part of your speech, your demeanor, your mannerisms, the way you speak to people, the way you deal with your family, the way you deal with your Lord, there has to be humility all around. And one of those aspects is humility in clothing. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, we're almost out of time. Just a few more points. We uh, will hope that you will continue on because this program is very short. And we just want to give you a good taste and clear some of this junk that's out there. That the the point about these uh, the woman, it seems like the, the Muslim women who do cover up, they make a conscious decision. Even people that might come from abroad, they come over here. Yeah. This is their opportunity to take off the hijab. They wear it. They yeah. still they 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 they're not slaves to their desires. They're slaves to their creator. And sure. They, they feel a great commitment to do this. And you have many Americans women who are taking a. a conscious decision and putting this on their own. They're not forced Absolutely. to do this. This Absolutely. is an amazing thing. Now, the other point that uh, the person uh, brought up is about the organized religion. And you hear this a lot where a person will be like, you know, that all religions are just man-made. And we, I would agree we shouldn't have to follow a man-made religion organized sure. by men. So how sure. can we clear up this misconception? I think that what's happened is, um, at least in Western society, there's been a lot of disappointment with certain religions because you could see clearly the logical contradictions in them, like right off the bat. You don't even have to go, go deep into finding the logical yeah. contradictions, you could see them right off the bat. So what's happened is that stigma has been, we've taken that, that paint and we've brushed all the religions with the same paint. Yeah. And we've said basically, oh, this one's man, uh, religion one is man-made, religion two is man-made, therefore all the others must be man-made too. So we actually stop looking into religion altogether, right? What we're arguing is that's not a fair assessment. You know, just like you don't judge, you know, you don't meet two people from a certain race and then pass judgment on the entire race. You don't meet two people of that gender and then pass judgment of the entire gender. Same, same thing with religion. You come across a certain religion and you're not satisfied with it. You didn't find it convincing. That's not fair for you to just brush off all other religions and say, oh, they're all man-made. That's actually an oversimplification and a, an intellectual laziness on your part. You're actually just justifying to yourself that yeah, I was kind of thinking about submitting to my creator. I didn't find something, you know, satisfying. Yeah. So I'm just going to go back to my old distractions, uh -huh. right? It's kind of like I'll tell you, you you're only going to dig, you know, the analogy, you're only going to dig into something and you're going to only spend effort and time in something that you think is worth it. Like if I ask you to dig a, a hole into the ground for $5 and and dig 10 feet half the day, you won't do it. But if I say dig 10 feet and I'll give you 20,000, you'll start shoveling. Yeah. So you only put time and effort into something that you think is worth it. If you think the truth and finding the purpose in your life is worth it, you'll dig and not find, then dig again and not find, and dig again and not find until you find. Right? You're going to keep on digging. But this, this attitude of, oh, generally, just without even any inquiry, without even caring to look at the matter, you just say, oh, you know, I don't have to look into it. I already know that there's nothing, it's all man-made, we're all going to go to heaven. Well, the idea of heaven comes from religion anyway, so where did you get that idea? <laughs> right? Yeah. You're, you're jumping the gun and you're, it's actually showing your intellectual laziness, your emotional laziness. And perhaps the reason is, maybe you don't want to find the truth. Maybe in, deep inside you, you're scared that if you find the truth, it's going to ask you to change yourself. And if you don't want to change yourself, Allah says in the Quran, بَلْ يُرِيدُ الْإِنسَانُ لِيَفْجُرَ أَمَامَهِ يَسْأَلُ أَيَّانَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ Very beautiful. He says, no, the human being, he wants to continue to disobey and explode in his disobedience that is in front of him right away. 
He wants to stay in that rut. Yeah. And then that's what leads him to ask, oh, when is the judgment day coming anyway? When is the resurrection coming? It's not going to happen. We're all going to go to heaven. Look at what Allah said and look at what you're saying. It's like he drew a picture of what you're saying. Subhanallah. You know what, when I, when I study Qur'an, and then I, I look at the kinds of questions people ask, it's incredible. Allah knows us better than we know ourselves. You're not the first person to ask this question. There have been hundreds of thousands of people before, millions if not, that have asked the same question of their Lord, of their purpose in life. And there are people who found that answer and were sincere to themselves. And there were people who passed by these responses and said, no, my desires, my temptations, my seductions are just too powerful for me. I'm going to stay in this mess. You have to decide if you're stronger than your desires. And I want to create an urgency with this person. I know they're sincere in the many uh, thousands that are watching that death is a reality. It's not something that this should be put off searching for the truth. Thousands of people just in America die every day. I'm told that close to 150,000 die globally. So death can reach us at any time. And this Absolutely. is a fact. And we should kind of get on the ball about finding what the true purpose of our life is. Absolutely. You know, أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُمْ يُدْرِكُمُ الْمَوْتِ وَلَوْ كُنْتُمْ فِي بُرُوجٍ مُشَيَّدَةٍ Allah says, wherever you may be, death will come to you. Even if you are in fortified camps, you're in the best security system. Death does not need to knock on your door. It will come right to you. You could be in your beds. You could be in your sleep. You could be driving to work. You could be perfectly healthy one day and a heart attack and died the next. We say it was sudden cause, sudden death, right? Cause of death unknown. This happens too. Death is not in your hands, it is the hands of your Creator. And because there's no timeline, you think you make a 40 year plan, you may not even have 3 hours left on this earth. I don't know how much time I have left, you don't know how much time you have left. Yeah. So you, we have to have a sense of urgency to finding our purpose. Because once that, that, that clock stops ticking, and we leave this earth, then like one of the companions of the Prophet said, Ali radiallahu anhu, he said people are sleeping, it's beautiful, he said people are sleeping, and when they die is when they wake up. That's when their eyes open. And nasu niyam, people are asleep. So we, we ask that you wake up before you go into the grave. Where everybody else thinks you've been put to sleep, the reality will be you've actually been woken up at that point. And you don't, we, don't want, we don't wish that upon you. We don't wish that you wake up at that point. We wish upon you that you wake up now. That you look at, think about your purpose and reality now. Inshallah. Yeah, and it's not fair now that you expect the Creator or you go to your boss and he told you and he gave you a list of responsibilities. You neglected it, now you want to get paid at the end. Yeah. Exactly. It doesn't make sense. Okay, thank you for being with us. You're quite welcome. Okay. We okay. hope to have you back again, inshallah. God inshallah. Look and forward thank to you. It. I really hope that you're sincere, that you're honest, and i sure that you am. I'm, I'm sure that you want to know the truth, and I hope that this somewhat will stimulate you to continue on in your journey. Do the most important thing. Ask the one who created this universe and everything in it. Take the first step. Don't fight the guidance. Ask Him to guide you. The one who created you and took care of you and is still taking care of you, ask Him for the guidance. And He created you. I mean, one of the beautiful things is that He's the most loving and the most merciful and it'd be unfair that He wouldn't guide you. But it's unfair to yourself if you don't even ask Him to give you the guidance. So ask Him to guide you. Take that first step, that first crucial step to wanting to know the truth. And then when the truth comes, be on it. It's very simple. And Islam is calling you to something that's in your very nature. To be a slave, to be one who surrenders and submits to just God alone and not His creation. And if you can dig this, this simple thing, then everything else will fall in place. It's a very beautiful way of life. And we hope that you got the benefit from this show. And we look forward to having you again. God willing, inshallah, on the Deen Show. Until next time, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم Come and see.
see what everyone's talking about. Who? If you find one contradiction, it can't be from God. But the rational idea, the rational explanation is, you do your best. Give up worshiping God as one. I will never give up spreading this message. I hope that you take that necessary step. You don't know if you're going to live till tomorrow. So you got to find that urgency to do the right thing right now. The, the reality of life usually doesn't sink in until tragedy comes. You get a few bad people, the media grabs a hold of that and spends it the way they want to. If you say that you do not believe in Jesus, you have stepped outside of Islam. You cannot be a Muslim. It is attended our faith to... It's cold, it's late, everybody's sleeping. I arise and ask a lot to forgive me. Oh, Allah, you see, oh, Allah, you know all the sins I do. I turn to you to forgive my sins and my heart. I'm your sinful slave, you're my loving Lord, I'm the one who runs away, oh Allah guide me.